Welcome in to another all-new episode of the Women's Basketball Now podcast here on the Hoop Central YouTube channel. I am your host, Hamilton Neal, joining you as always here today. We have a ton of new content coming up here on the channel, lots of new videos on the way here in this month of June, and we've already had a lot of stuff to talk about, and we're going to have a lot more here on this episode, and we're talking about two topics in particular. First, we're talking about the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee, as they've selected seven cities as finalists to host the Women's Final Four from 2027 through 2031. We'll be going over all of that first, and then a look at the USA Basketball U18 Women's National Team. We'll have a full breakdown of the roster as well as the coaching staff, plus some of the first opponents for Team USA as they start play in just a couple of days on the 13th. And all of that coming up a little bit later. But first, we're going to talk about the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee as they've selected seven cities as finalists to host the Women's Final Four from 2027 through 2031. The cities being considered include Columbus, Ohio, Dallas, Texas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Portland, Oregon, Sacramento, California, San Antonio, Texas, and Tampa Bay, Florida. The finalist cities will be asked to deliver presentations to the committee in mid-November, and after that, the committee will vote and announce the host cities. Again, when you look at these seven cities, and the ones that are still under consideration here include Columbus, Dallas, Indianapolis, among others as well. Some of these have hosted many women's Final Fours, including Tampa, as well as Indianapolis, Cities like Sacramento and Portland are looking to host their first women's Final Four. And that's exciting because right now we are seeing, as you know, an incredible time as far as growth and excitement for women's college basketball when it comes to coverage and just when it comes to games being televised, the viewership when those games are put on TV and everything with ESPN, all that stuff is great. So good to see some new cities step in. Again, some of these cities have been here before and I think we'll be able to host in this cycle from 2027 through 31. I feel like Indy is going to be a great stop. San Antonio, Dallas hosted in 2017. They're actually hosting again coming up this next season in 2023. So this cycle is going to be very important. Again, just to get the cities locked down, I would like to see Portland and Sacramento both host because both of them are stepping up as new cities that have never hosted before to come in and say, we want a Final Four. And again, you look at Columbus, they hosted in 2018. Dallas in 17 and again in 23. San Antonio is another city that has hosted three women's Final Fours. Tampa and Indy have hosted three as well in many years. So like to see this from the NCAA Division I committee. Again, it's going to be a busy time for them. August and September, they're going to conduct the site visits and then presentations in mid-November. So right around the end of this year, maybe late November, early December, maybe even into mid-December, we're going to find out what cities are going to be hosting. So just a little bit of news there when it comes to women's college basketball and future Final Fours. Nina King is the chair of the committee and is leading this whole staff and is doing an incredible job. So definitely like where women's college basketball is going, especially with the coverage of the Final Four. We know this past year it was way up and way better from what it's been. And I think that in future years, and especially in this cycle, it's going to be really, really exciting to see. So the growth is there. And that's something that we try to highlight here on this channel. That's why we do what we do in exclusively now, covering women's college basketball. In the past, we were covering some men's college basketball, some NBA stuff, but now we're looking at exclusive women's basketball coverage. And again, we're trying to get some WNBA stuff going, but right now our main focus is on women's college basketball and that content for all you guys out there. So some great news out of women's college basketball. Again, as seven finalist cities have been announced, to host future women's Final Fours. Now let's talk about the USA Basketball U18 Women's National Team and a breakdown of their roster. We talked about the U17 National Team on one of our previous episodes of Women's Basketball Now, but again, here we're talking about the U18 National Team, which has on their entire roster players from the 2022 class and the 2023 class. Again, most of the players on this team are gonna be freshmen in college. They're actually already gonna be on college campuses coming up, but the ones that are on this roster aren't quite there yet because they have to fulfill this commitment to play for this team throughout June in the summer and then they'll be able to get on campus. And again, this is the 2022 FIBA U18 Women's Americas Championship and it's going to be played in Buenos Aires from June 13th through 19th and Team USA has their first matchup on the 13th. They'll be taking on Colombia, followed by a game against Puerto Rico the next day on the 14th, 
then on the 15th, they'll be taking on El Salvador. And Team USA has won gold in the last nine U18 tournaments, and their coaching staff is led by Joni Taylor, head coach at Texas A&M, new head coach, by the way, for the Aggies, and her assistants are Delisha Milton-Jones from Old Dominion and Terry Morin, head coach at Indiana University. Now let's look at the roster. Break down the 12-player roster and talk about what these players bring to the table. Again, I talked about this with the U17 team. What the committee likes to do when they're picking this team is obviously find the most versatile players, the most talented players among the bunch, but also ones that can bring something different to the table. And there can be versatility, and there can be dynamic play out there because they're all so different. Starting at the top is Ice Brady, class of 2022 five-star post player, six foot three, ranked fifth overall according to ESPN. She is signed to UConn. Aliyah Del Rosario is ranked eighth in the class of 2023, six foot five post player. Caitlin Gilbert is a five foot eight point guard from the 2022 class, ranked 31st overall according to ESPNW. She is signed to Arizona. London Jones out of the 2022 class is signed to UCLA, five foot five point guard. Chloe Kitts is ranked 17th in the class of 2023, six foot two forward out of DME Academy. Connie McMahon is out of the 2022 class. She's a five foot 11 wing, ranked 23rd overall, signed to Ohio State. Samaya Nichols is a five foot six point guard out of the 2023 class. India Navarre is a five foot nine guard out of the 2022 class, ranked 20th overall, signed to Stanford. Also signed to Stanford is Courtney Ogden from the 2023 class. She's ranked 12th overall, 5'11 wing, Justine Passat from the 2022 class, signed with Tennessee, 6'2 wing, ranked 11th overall. UCLA signee Kiki Rice is ranked 2nd overall in the 2022 class, 5'11 point guard. And rounding things out, last but not least, Grace Van Sluten, number 13 overall in the 2022 class, 6'3 forward, signed with Kelly Graves and the Oregon Ducks. So that is the roster for the U18 women's national team. And again, it's very versatile. Every single one of these players is unlike the other, and that's what you want to accomplish when putting a roster like this together. Starting with Ice Brady at the top, signed to UConn, has tremendous size and physicality. At six foot three, she can play down on the low block and really stack up with anybody. And she's someone I think will have a lot of opportunity to play pretty early on, just because of UConn's lack of finesse on the interior. And that's something that we've talked about in previous episodes of Women's Basketball Now, is we talked about the national championship game in South Carolina and how in that contest, they were very much exposed on the glass. Really, it was the best example of that, more than any other game. And there were other games where UConn was out-rebounded and just really out-toughed on the inside. So I feel like, overall, this is a great addition for UConn. Ayanna Patterson is the other freshman in this class for them and is already on campus starting summer workouts with the Huskies right now. She's super versatile as well, but... Ice Brady, again, brings that physicality, brings a little bit of versatility, but I think she's going to be that back-to-the-basket, double-double type of player down the line for UConn, and again, could help them win games as early as this year as a freshman. I think she could be called upon, especially if we see Aaliyah Edwards struggle a little bit. Again, Amari DeBerry is still very young. She's only going to be a sophomore, and then Juhas is going to be the veteran of that group. So Brady, again, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if she comes in and makes a big impact right away. Del Rosario from the 23 class has tremendous size at 6'5". A lot of schools are starting to really make her priority. Duke, South Carolina, Miami, just some of the schools in the mix right now. And I feel like she has really developed over the last year and a half or so. Since going to the Webb School in Tennessee and transferring, she has done an incredible job at just feeling out defenses because players like this that have the size and that have the physicality they're always very raw to start and they have the tangible things they have the size and they have the ability to run the floor rebound but it's about getting that face-up jumper going finding that versatility just like the reading defenses building your basketball IQ and I think she's done a great job of that and that's why she moved up a lot in the ESPNW rankings all the way up to number eight right now Kaylin Gilbert very good point guard once a five star in 22 I think it's going to be a nice addition to the Arizona backcourt London Jones, also going to be playing the Pac-12 at UCLA, along with Kiki Rice. Very, very hyped recruit, 5'11 point guard, ranked second in the class only to Lauren Betts. And we know wire-to-wire Lauren Betts was the number one player in 2022. Now, Kiki Rice was able to move up all the way to that number two spot, and no one surpassed her right after she got to number two 
in the ESPNW rankings quite a while ago. She had a tremendous season for a Sidwell Friends School. They were one of the best teams in the country and really had an interesting recruitment down the stretch because Stanford was there, UConn was there, ended up going with UCLA, opting to go to a school where she could play right away and maybe even start right away at point guard sooner than if you go to UConn, obviously, if you go to even Stanford right now. So definitely a, a great pair of additions for UCLA, London Jones and obviously Kiki Rice. And Chloe Kitts is a, a really good player out of 2023, someone that has really been able to raise her stock. Playing at DME Academy has had some good showings over the last couple of high school seasons, doing good things on the AAU circuit right now, but her recruitment is really close to the best. Louisville is a school we know is in the mix, and that's a school that she's visited, but everything else at this point is really a rumor, or at least it seems that way, because anything that comes out with Chloe Kitts about any other school really other than Louisville, we're just not sure on it, and that's why it's hard to report on her as far as recruitment and things like that, but right now, here it's just about her game, and she has that ability to face up. And I think she's still going to get more and more physical, but she really is, I think, that stretch four kind of player that can go out, hit that face-up jumper, starting to develop a three-point game, and obviously can play some on the inside and rim run. So I love what she brings to the table. And another player I really like here on this team is Grace Van Sluten, 6'3 forward, signed to Oregon. I think he's still a little bit under the radar here on this team and is someone that I think is under the radar in the class of 2022. Someone that, yes, is in the top 15, is almost a top 10 player, but I think people still don't talk about her enough because as a forward, again, she has that ability to move around, starting to find that balance between inside and outside. And we know Oregon offense is high-paced. It's high up-tempo, fast-paced, quick offense, and you got to be able to move. you got to be able to run the floor. you got to be able to run their actions, you know, pick and roll, that type of stuff, motion offense. And I think that she's going to have an opportunity to play right away because she's smart. And a lot of players in high school are already doing this stuff now. The systems they run in high school are very similar to what they run in college with motion offenses, with the high level of pick and roll action and screen setting, that type of stuff. And as a forward, she's going to be called upon to do that. Now, obviously, the talent she's played against in high school is not what she's going to be facing in college. It's not the case for any of these players. But what this, the systems that they run, again, are, are somewhat similar to what they do at the college level, and it's starting to have a trickle-down effect, much like we've seen in other sports and even on the men's side of basketball as well. So really, really great roster. I love what all these players bring to the table, and there's a lot of others that I did not break down there, uh, but those are just some of my favorite players on this team that I think are going to provide some good things for this squad and probably going to win another gold medal. It's just the standard for Team USA, especially for the U18 team winning the last nine U18 tournaments in outstanding coaching staff. Joni Taylor again just made the move from Georgia to Texas A&M, now jumping into this year with Team USA. Terry Morin has been at Indiana for quite a while and has built a great program there. And then you look at uh, Delisha Milton-Jones from Old Dominion, going to also be someone who can provide some knowledge and some know-how on this coaching staff. So really great stuff there with the U18 Women's America Championships and the national team roster for the USA. That's all the time we have on this episode of Women's Basketball Now. Stay locked here on Hoop Central for more videos coming up, including our next episode, where we will be talking about a matchup between UConn and Maryland. Both teams are going to be playing this upcoming season. Full breakdown of that game again coming up in our next episode of Women's Basketball Now.